Hi, I'm Ed Marzell, President and CEO of Conexus, and today I would like to give you an introduction and overview to our new tool, our new addition to the Conexus Instrumented Safeguard Suite called Arbor, which is our fault tree analysis application that is tightly integrated into our existing Vertigo SIS safety lifecycle software. So first off, let's just go ahead and log in to Conexus Instrumented Safeguard Suite. So I'll just go to kiss.conexus.com. All right. Okay, so simply log in using the normal means of logging in if you have an account. If you don't have an account, you can feel free to uh, send an email to Conexus so that we can set you up with a free trial. Okay, once you sign in, uh, you log in to the uh, project manager landing page. Let me just uh, select our Conexus samples facility, uh, which is where the study will reside. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new study. So Arbor is the new study type that's going to bring up our fault tree analysis. Uh, so for a study name, uh, let me just put demonstration in and hit create and I have created uh, a new Arbor study. So you start at the dashboard page, which gives you uh, a little bit of overview. So you could do things like, you know, project numbers, uh, time units are gonna be in hours, uh, project notes, and then even revisions and recommendations that are associated, and then some overall results on the project. Now, with all of the Conexus applications, there's an action ribbon that allows you to navigate around. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to want to click here and go to the fault tree page, which is going to bring up the graphical representation of the fault tree. And I'll build out a little fault tree here. I'm just going to do a quick example of a very basic safety function uh, with a pressure switch, solenoid, and valve. So uh, in order to build the tree, it's really simple. I can add basic events, and I can add gates, and then I can add basic events to those gates. So now I've, I've built my basic structure, uh, and I'm gonna start with saying, okay, for event number one, oh, I'm sorry, let me, uh, go back into the correct mode and try that again. There we go. So uh, for event number one, the details, the description, let me just say uh, pressure switch fails on demand. I can make this an initiating event or not, which is not going to be important to SIL verification calculations, but uh, in general purpose, it does become important. Uh, the calculation mode, I can make it either always true, always false, or I'm in this case going to use an event model. And then I can select the event model, uh, which I will get to shortly. Let me just hit update for now and kind of build out the structure of the tree. So my pressure switch fails on demand. Uh, and then I have a gate here where I'm going to say the final element subsystem fails on demand. And I can uh, assign a gate type. Uh, in this case, it's going to be an OR gate. And I could put, again, notes in here if I wanted to. Just let me click update there. So now you'll see that uh, I have an OR gate here. And when I go to the uh, top gate, let me just say that uh, it would be the SIF as a whole fails on demand. And I'm going to want that also to be an OR gate. So the way I've set up the logic, the SIF will fail if either the pressure switch fails or the final element subsystem fails. And the final element subsystem will fail if either the solenoid valve fails on demand. And let me just hit update there. Or the valve assembly fails on demand. Okay, so with that, I've kind of just basically set up the general structure uh, of the safety instrument function. Now let me go into the events and do a little bit more detail. So uh, you can see over here on this list view that I have all of, everything is, is kind of set up. So all of my fault tree pages, 
all of the events, uh, all of the gates, all of the event models, which right now I have no event models, so that's empty. Um, <clears throat> so what I can do is let me set up event number one and create a model. So uh, I need to select a model. I can add a new model or I can add new from library. So let me, let me add new first just to kind of show you uh, what a model would look like. And let me just say a custom pressure switch uh, is the uh, title and custom pressure switch could also be the description. And then you can set three different types of models in Arbor. Uh, it's either constant, which means a constant failure rate and or constant unavailability, an overt failure, or a covert failure. So those are the three different types of models. For safety instrumented functions, when we're calculating probability of failure on demand, you generally use the covert model. And then we could type in a failure rate. So let's say the failure rate uh, of this device is going to be 9 e minus 6 per hour. We can enter in a mean time to repair. Let's go 72 hours. Test interval, let's just go once per year, 8760 hours and insert. And then I hit update. Okay, and now you'll see that that information about the uh, event is loaded here. And the custom pressure switch model has also been loaded. I can now actually even start running calculations. So uh, up in the action ribbon, you see the run calculations button. Uh, I press that and it will calculate out as much as it possibly can, which is basically uh, just the probability of failure on that pressure switch. So there's uh, probability of failure is the Q, the unavailability, and um, also the W, which is going to be the uh, failure frequency. Now, what I did here was I created a custom model. But the beauty of using Arbor as opposed to any other fault tree analysis tool is that you can use that full Connexus database that's built into Vertigo to populate your fault tree. So in this case, let me create a new model. Uh, and I want to create a new model from the library. So when I click that, it's going to pop up the libraries that I have access to. So let's say I want to go into the uh, Connexus Premium Library uh, for sensors, and I want to select, uh, let me see if I can find pressure switch. Okay, so we've got a long list of pressure switches available. Let me just put generic in. Okay, so uh, generic pressure switch in clean service. Then I want to select, well, which failure modes do I want to track for this specific event? Uh, so in this case, it's going to be dangerous undetected and dangerous detected. Well, dangerous detected would end up being zero anyway because pressure switch like this doesn't have diagnostics. Uh, but I'm going to carry those in. So now when I click insert, it's going to grab all that failure information out of the library and shove it into uh, the database here. Okay, so now this is a covert failure with a mean time to repair of 72 hours test interval of 8760 and I hit update update and now I have a new model for pressure switch so let me go ahead and uh, do the same thing to the other items in the database area okay so I'm gonna want to import the data for a generic uh, three-way solenoid valve and let's go ahead and say uh, D de-energize to trip uh, generic three-way SOV. And here again, uh, dangerous undetected, dangerous detected. Hit insert and there we go. Select that it's a covert failure model with 72 hour mean time to repair, 8760 on the test interval. Hit update and update again and now I have all that data for the solenoid valve so let me build up my valve assembly the same way uh, I'm gonna want to add a new uh, item from the library or you'll also note 
everything that I've already entered in in the event models, I can pick that event model. So if you have multiple instances of the same type of instrument, they're already defined. Uh, so new from library, again, I'm going to go into the Conexus Premium Library, uh, Final Element, and for the instrument in this case, it is going to be a generic uh, air actuated ball valve is what I typically uh, want to put in here. Uh, air actuated gate valve. Uh, let me just air actuated ball valve generic. There we go. Hit insert. Oh. I have to select the failure mode. Uh, so again, Lambda DU, Lambda DD, the dangerous failure modes. And hit insert, and now it created everything. Uh, covert, 72, 8760, and hit update. And boom, I have all the information. If I want to run calculations, I go again to the run calculations button on the action ribbon, and everything is calculated out. So my probability of failure on demand for this system is 0 0.02. Uh, and it also calculates the frequencies. This would be the dangerous failure frequency uh, in this case. So we're calculating all those items throughout the fall tree. Now, some other items to note um, in terms of usability. Uh, zooming and uh, shrinking are very easy. You can... Uh, rearrange how things are laid out uh, in the, 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 the view itself. You can add, uh, cut, paste, copy, delete uh, individual events or entire sections uh, of the tree itself. So very uh, easy to use. And let's not forget, this is all inside uh, the Conexus online framework. So everything is in the cloud and available 24-7 to all members of the project team. Now, some other details that you may be interested in for project work. Um, <clears throat> you can go and you can get a table uh, and look at all the gates individually. You can get a table and look at all of the events individually and uh, another table that gives you all of the models that you've created for events uh, for quantification purposes. We also have a minimal cut set view that's going to allow you to look at all the cut sets that were generated in the fault tree analysis calculation, uh, what their contribution is to the overall PFD. So cut set number one, which is the pressure switch failing on demand, actually contributes uh, 62 percent of the unavailability and 62 percent of the frequency contribution so that's kind of your bad actor so uh, a lot of information available uh, on cut sets and you can show the cut sets from the top gate or any lower gate so full comprehensive cut set analysis capabilities and then finally we have the ability to do exporting and reporting uh, we can export the overall study uh, into an Arbor file. And uh, we can also uh, create reports. Now reports are generated uh, essentially as exports to uh, <clears throat> Microsoft Excel files. So if I want to export the cut sets, uh, when I do that, it generates a, a, an Excel file that I can then open up and then you will see the printout of all of the cut sets and all of the attributes of all the cut sets in Excel. Similarly, you can print that information out for gates, events, models, cut sets, recommendations, and revisions. And then if you only want the, the view of the fault tree itself, uh, when you're in the fault tree view, you can click on the print button and it will create an image. Uh, and you can open that image up and uh, it will show you the image of the fall tree for cutting and pasting into report documentation. So that's kind of a quick overview of this new tool that we're very, very excited about. Uh, it's, it's quick, it's easy, uh, it's going to allow streamlined analysis. This is a software tool that was written by safety instrument and system engineers 
for safety instrumented systems engineers. Uh, so it's, it's purpose built to make project work very efficient uh, and allows very tight integration into our Vertigo software. So another feature that I should kind of note here is that in a lot of cases, when you're using a SIL verification software package, uh, sometimes you need to externally model something as a fault tree because it doesn't fit into one of those canned one out of one, one out of two, two out of three equation types. Well, what you can do is you can build an entire subsystem. So a sensor subsystem, fault tree subsystem here in Arbor. And then when you go into Vertigo, when you define your final element, you can simply say to use the results of the analysis of an Arbor study as the PFD or as the nuisance trip rate for that subsystem. So we have really tight integration and flexibility in terms of reporting for safety instrumented system studies. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of our Arbor software. We're really excited about it and we hope that you'll get the opportunity uh, to uh, get a demonstration license and take a look at the functionality and ease of use of the software for yourself. Thanks again.